Okay, hey there everybody, uh, Andrew King here. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Canadian Musician Magazine and uh, thanks for joining us for this webinar uh, presented by Canadian Musician and NWC Webinars. This is Capitalize on Music Conferences and uh, yeah, we're trying to get you primed, prepped, ready to take advantage of all of the opportunities uh, which abound at events like Canadian Music Week, East Coast Music Week. Uh, these are just right around the corner. Uh, South by Southwest just wrapped up. North by Northeast coming up shortly and uh, another swarm of them in the fall. So, uh, yeah, whether we're looking at the national level for CMW, North by Northeast or the various provincial music industry association music weeks, uh, anything that's got a conference component, a networking component where industry delegates are coming together and basically trying to drum up opportunities for artists and industry. That's what we're talking about today. So we'll jump into this very shortly. Just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. Um, while I'm gabbing through those, I'm going to launch a quick poll here, just uh, gauging who's in our audience this evening, which helps steer the conversation a little bit, uh, but also informs future sessions. So going to fire this up here and yeah just asking in which capacity you are working in the industry we we'll give a few minutes here for everyone to uh, get their input in uh, you'll also see in your interface there's a, a text field where you can submit questions in writing and uh, we invite you to do so about halfway through the presentation we'll stop take a few questions particularly any that are, are timely pertain to something we've just talked about um, and if there are a bunch which is often the case uh, fret not if we don't get to yours because there'll be a, a longer question period at the end of the presentation and uh, we can be a lot more informal and chatty then. So uh, feel free to ask anything too. Um, just to be clear, what we're covering here is more so on the networking and education side of these types of music conferences and events as opposed to uh, the showcasing side and going out to see music. Uh, for that, check out Surefire Showcasing. That was our free webinar in December 2016. If you go to NWC webinars.com you can access all of our previous sessions uh, and that's where you can go to register for future ones which brings me to my next point uh, our next webinar taking place late April is going to be with Luther Mallory check out Luther Mallory productions.com uh, we're going to be helping you own the stage basically like a performance coaching workshop to help uh, with the psychology of performance get you primed and ready to deliver the best possible show regardless of what type of show or what type of audience you're playing for uh, yeah to help you be your absolute best on stage make a long lasting impact Join us for that, nwcwebinars.com. Uh, we'll have registration starting within the next few days. And lastly, uh, at the end of the presentation here, I'll be showing you a link for our sister company, musicbooksplus.com, where you can pick up a few titles we've chosen that will uh, round out the what we've covered in the session here. Uh, there's also some tips there to help you take advantage of your webinar experience. Here, let's close this poll here. We've got about 85% of our attendees, and I love when it's nice, clean numbers. Uh, so here's what we're looking at. Majority are performance and recording artists. We've got a few uh, behind-the-scenes industry pros, and um, yeah, kind of the usual breakdown here, which is great. So whether you're an artist or an industry professional, uh, what we're covering here will help you make the most of your music conference attendance and I guess more importantly, make the most of the money that you're spending to take part, to travel, to get there, to register and everything. Um, oh, I forgot one more thing. The handouts. I uh, put a few articles from Canadian Musician that cover this topic or related topics about uh, how to take advantage of music conferences and things like that. Check those out. One of those is brand new. Uh, it's called Catapult Your Career. It's in the current March-April edition of Canadian Musician, but uh, we've got it posted online for free. If you go to canadianmusician.com slash features, uh, we post one or two editorials from every one of our issues there for free uh, for the public good and ultimately to I guess, uh, help drive some traffic towards the site and give people a good idea of what we're doing in Canadian Musician. That latest one by Samantha Everts is absolutely fantastic and covers uh, uh, quite a bit of what we're going to be chatting about this evening too. So a shout out to Samantha. It's a truly great piece with input from some industry heavyweights that you can access for free by grabbing the PDF from the handouts tab there or by going to canadianmusician.com slash features. So let's break into this here. Appreciate the patience there. So yeah, my name is Andrew King, editor of Canadian Musician, as well as a few other uh, publications from Norse Whitney Communications. 
And I have attended, suffice to say, attended a lot of these types of music conferences from the national to provincial to regional level. Uh, and what we're talking about here, a lot of this generated from my own experience, much of it from uh, other industry professionals with more time in the business than I've got. And uh, yeah, kind of a pool of really great ideas that we're bringing here. So a quick overview of the topics we're going to cover, uh, panels and workshops coming up in a moment. So basically the types of sessions where whether it's a group of people or one sole presenter where you're going to learn something about a specific topic that's announced beforehand. Uh, next are, and we've seen these crop up a lot more at these types of events, but one-on-one -on -one meetings, sort of like the idea of, in a lot of cases, it's kind of like speed dating where you're jumping five, ten minutes at a time to different delegates. Uh, sometimes it's more mentorship where they're putting you, uh, the event is pairing you with one or two industry professionals that you've uh, asked to work with to get a leg up to uh, yeah, take some time and get learned. Um, then there's also the networking events and mixers. Now, uh, an event like CMW, like uh, East Coast Music Week, I mean, the whole event is essentially a networking opportunity. Anyone you see with one of those uh, special lanyards or badges is essentially a contact that can be helping you in your career in some way. Uh, but then within those, there are often sponsored mixers or, uh, yeah, invite-only networking type events. And so I'll help you uh, make the most of those. And then lastly, we'll talk about, you know, once the event is over, you're back at home uh, or in the van on the way home or to your next tour date, what can you do to basically, yeah, solidify that investment uh, to jump on any and all opportunities that either are right there on the table now or to kind of set you up for uh, a solid relationship that could yield some benefits down the road. So here we go, panels or workshops. Um, for building your schedule, I mean, this one's pretty straightforward, but uh, obviously most of these events will have a complete list of what's happening there ahead of time. And I think the, the real point to stress here is to take advantage of as many of these as you possibly can. I mean, in a lot of cases, uh, if you're flying, paying to be put up in a hotel somewhere for one of these events, yeah, you're going out at night and seeing bands, seeing showcases, maybe performing a showcase. Uh, but that nine or 10 to four slot where it's packed with keynotes and panels, there's really no excuse or no reason not to jump into as many of these as you can. Um, from there, as far as figuring out what's going to make the most sense for you, obviously you want to look at your current uh, immediate needs as a band or, or for your acts. Like, where are you in your career? What's the next step? Uh, are you looking to secure a manager or an agent? Are you about to embark on your first national tour? Um, do you see your music or videos being shared a lot on YouTube and think that you should be generating some income from this? In any case, these are things that are right now in your today and obviously things you want to pounce on. Um, but then don't be shy. If you're an artist just starting out your career, if there is a topic that you think might be out of your league for the time being, if, take a look at the presenters. Um, yeah, there's really no loss to uh, spending some time in a room full of your peers and just absorbing as much of this information as you can. Uh, to that point of panelists, it's an interesting uh, piece that Samantha brings up in uh, the Catapult Your Career feature, but in some cases you're going to have seen some of these presenters before, maybe it's people you know, uh, and while it is good to you know support your friends and um, yeah, want to be around to fill up the room if there's someone you know on the panel. Uh, if it's information or a relationship that you can leverage that you have access to at a different time, keep that in mind and think of what's exclusive to me here and you know what type of topics, what type of information, what type of discussion can I not get in my immediate music market? Can I not get from a simple Google search? These are things to keep in mind, sort of that exclusivity of what's on offer at these events. Uh, so yeah, consider all these things when you're when you're uh, deciding which sessions you're going to attend. Now, taking notes and taking action. I put these together because yeah, everyone brings a tablet or a notebook and jots down things that people are saying when you're at a, a panel like this. Um, my boss, our publisher Jim Norris, who's presented a few of these webinars before, has a great story, and I'm forgetting right now who the titan of industry is. But Tony Robbins, the uh, motivational speaker, was delivering a talk um, a few years back and looked into one of the first few rows 
and saw this gentleman uh, writing with both hands in two separate notebooks and kind of stopped the presentation and asked, to, can I ask what you're doing? And he says, well, with my left hand, I'm writing down what you're saying. And with my right hand, I'm writing down what I'm going to do about it. And uh, I wish I could tell you who this guy is because it was a very successful uh, businessman. But the point here is, yeah, it's all great to absorb information and I guess you just want to avoid it going in one year in one year and out the other. Even if you're taking notes, what are the chances that in four, five, six weeks, months down the road, you're going to be revisiting uh, these scribblings in your notebook? The best bet is to sit, take notes, but also make notes about how you're going to put this information to work for you right away, instantly, while you're sitting there in the hour after the session or in the days that you get back home. Have some action items, make a plan to, uh, well, again, just make the most, take advantage of uh, what you're privy to by attending these events. Uh, engaging and asking questions, again, and, and it's great that you participated in the session here. Again, feel free to fire any questions uh, and you can go ahead and shoot them off while the session's going on, we'll break shortly. Um, but yeah, the opportunity for these events, I mean, you can watch the recording, you can read articles, these are great, but having that in the flesh contact, the ability to interact and engage with the experts, with the knowledge base in front of you, there should be, and I think there is, and if there isn't, someone should say something, there should be a Q&A period uh, after or during every single session like this to help get the attendees uh, the most out of the experience. So um, yeah, come prepared even. You might have some things you want to ask related to the topic. Uh, if they don't get covered, throw a hand up. I mean, starting that dialogue, being having been a panelist uh, and presenter at a lot of these types of events, my favorite moments, and I can remember a lot of them in depth, is when it turns from being a one-way dialogue to a two or hundred-way conversation, you know, when you've got the panelists and attendees all engaging in discourse and um, there was a great one, January Music Meeting by uh, Manitoba Music. Shout out to Roland Deschambeau, who put together a killer group of panelists. And on the last day, we started talking about equality and sexism in the music industry. And the entire room, it was just such a great experience because all of us delegates were sitting up front, you know, on the slightly higher stools. But by the end of the session, the attendees were sharing more stories and anecdotes than we were. And um, I think everyone, that idea of... Uh, the sum being greater than the individual uh, parts really comes out of that. Like I love when the panelists can stand to learn something from one another and from the audience. And uh, well, that's really what makes these types of events special. So don't be shy. This isn't a one way street, nor should it be. Obviously respect the experience and intelligence that's here and that's being presented for your benefit. But uh, yeah, there's something to be said for collaboration. And final note here, working the room, this is a key one. Uh, and if a lot of what I've said here sounds straightforward, please take uh, special heed of this. Um, when you're attending these type of events, yeah, it's great to wait around after and share contact info and get a business card into the hands of the delegates or presenters on stage. But maybe even more valuable to you is the fact that that entire room is full of people like you uh, whether it's fellow artists or industry people, or I guess vice versa, depending on which of those you are. Um, but that room probably is full of photographers, full of artist managers, full of artists from other markets, maybe that you've tried to tour before. And networking with the people sitting in the room with you is something that I think a lot of people just don't think to do. And there's often more value in that than trying to get a handshake with you know a very prominent, well-known dignitary up front who's uh, well, probably... Uh, got a swarm of folks around him or her. So um, that is a key bit of advice is if you're going to one of these panels, bring enough business cards that you can uh, work the entire room of however many people you think are there and try and get connected with as many of those attendees as you can because, uh, yeah, you never know where that might lead. Uh, if you're in Toronto for CMW but you're from Calgary, you may meet someone from Manitoba and be able to exchange headlining shows on your next tour. Uh, you may be able to you know, get a discount on photography from someone that's just starting their career and has come to this event to get a leg up. So uh, keep those opportunities in mind. Working the room just as important as working who's on stage. 
And obviously, uh, questions. If you've got any questions regarding panels, workshops, uh, keynotes, again, fire them at me. After we talk about one-on-one -on -one meetings and mentorship sessions, we'll take a little break here. Um, so yeah, the one-on-one -on -one meetings, like I say, these are becoming a lot more uh, common, especially at the smaller regional events where, say, the province, uh, whether it's Music BC or Music PEI or bringing out delegates, uh, what they'll often do is set up these type of speed dating one-on-ones where they're trying to get the artists in front of as many delegates as they can. And they work with the artists ahead of time to figure out who they want to meet with. Um, really great opportunity, and I'm glad that we're seeing a lot more of it. Uh, something that you should be taking advantage of and the way to do so. So first off, we'll talk about the benefits. I mean, yeah, there's something about putting time in with uh, a professional, especially if it's someone that you've been looking to engage for a potential relationship, uh, you know, a booking agent, a manager, a prolific or high profile member of the music media. And what these do is they give you a chance to come together in an arena where both sides kind of know what's going on. You know, if you uh, catch someone, a delegate at the Bullvine or at a showcase uh, later at night where they're trying to have a beer and relax, sure, introduce yourself, exchange your business card, great. Uh, but this is really a forum where both sides know that they're sitting down to share ideas. And um, yeah, that the arena, that environment has some real benefits. So uh, first off, when you're identifying contacts, so in a lot of these cases, you're going to have a chance to see all of the delegates that are taking part in these one-on-one -on -one or mentorship sessions. And much like with the panel uh, scheduling, you want to look at who you want to engage right now, who's going to benefit you, what type of professional uh, is going to benefit you at this stage of your career, but also be thinking long run. And there's no harm. As a matter of fact, I personally, and can speak for a few people I've spoken with, almost prefer it where it's not someone sitting down with the attitude of, I'm an artist, you're a booking agent, and I need a booking agent, so I want to work with you. Uh, in a lot of cases, I prefer it where it's someone that maybe realizes that they're not yet at that stage, but want to help get poised and learn a bit to get them, to propel them to that stage where, you know, I appreciate the info in a year, uh, I'd love to circle back and kind of show you how I've put what you've told me to do into action. And I, I honestly think that there is more to be said that those type of meetings uh, can breed success just as well, if not more so than something that's more immediate and direct. Um, so yeah, identify who you want to talk to, who you need to meet now. Uh, how you stand to benefit from the interaction, but also think ahead. You know, no one's going to think that it's a waste of time just because you're not at the level to be in that person's wheelhouse. Um, so as far as steering the conversation, one thing to warn here is a few people, when I participate in these events, sit down with the attitude of what can you do for me? And obviously that's why we're both there, you know, we're giving time to uh, try and impart some experience, some tidbits onto these artists. So uh, like that is part of it, but at the same time, it should be, like I was saying earlier, a bit more of a two way street where, um, yeah, you want to make it clear that you know who this person is, that you're familiar with their resume, that you know the power or, uh, you know, the opportunities that they can open for you. Um, but more so it's about just starting that relationship. This is a great forum for identifying what sets you apart. Uh, what kind of music are you making? What's your vision? What do you see as your next one, two, three goals, your next three career plateaus? Uh, how do you think you're going to get there and maybe invite input? What I mean is uh, to sit down in front of someone and um, who you know ahead of time and ask things that, again, you can find on Google uh, to talk about things that could be put in front of any booking agent. It's just not as rewarding, whereas if it's someone whose roster you know, say it's an agent that works with the band that you really like, respect, that you sound like, um, being able to start off on that foot and steering the conversation so that, yeah, you're learning something, but you're also, I guess, planting some seeds for a long-term relationship and future meetings and educational opportunities that's going to go uh, a long way. And then effective follow-up. 
Uh, and you know, this could be said for anyone that you had met, whether it was a panelist or an attendee uh, from the previous slide there in a room full of, uh, of other learners at the conference side of things. But as far as effective follow-up, that's especially important in a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, shortly after you've met, or even shortly after the event, but certainly don't wait long. Uh, fire off a quick follow-up you know it was a pleasure to meet i really appreciate what you had to say about a b and c i plan to put d e and f into practice right away um, by the way you said this uh, can you show me an example all of these things basically just set the stage for a strong working relationship that can be ongoing and that's going to yield a lot more benefits than sitting down in front of someone and giving them a quick elevator pitch about uh, you know why your band's going to be selling out whatever venue is big in your city and trying to, you know, strike that immediate, uh, immediately gratifying kind of relationship, which not to say doesn't happen, it does, but yeah, you want to be realistic about what you stand to get here and just know that a long-term back and forth uh, is likely a lot more beneficial than all the cards on the table. Can you help me yay or nay uh, on the spot? So we'll keep rolling here. Um, yeah. Questions, we've got a few, actually some great ones here uh, that I'll get to momentarily. And whereas I'll often uh, put these in front of our guest presenters, since I'm handling this one on my own, you might have to bear with me while I read. Um, get your questions in now. Again, there's a longer period coming up. And after this, we'll be chatting about networking events, post-event follow-up, etc. cetera. Uh, so here we go. Someone asks, are press kits in paper format still something used in the business or should everything be given out digital format, uh, i.e. USB or download cards, et cetera, for promotion during networking? Phenomenal question. So um, think about the environment here. I don't mean the, like, the earth. I just mean the environment of where you are. So uh, for example, a lot of publicists will still put together paper press kits and send a hard copy CD to media if they know that it's a media that's receptive to that. So an example is a college radio station or a college newspaper where, um, you know, there's young people who are often volunteering their time uh, to play tracks or to write reviews for the school paper uh, who, you know, in a lot of cases aren't getting anything except maybe a CD to keep and play in their car. So uh, a lot of publicists and radio trackers know that a physical product and sheet is going to work well for these people. Um, so that's one thing, like the environment where it's a mail out, where you're trying to go after someone for which a hard copy would have some benefit. At an event like CMW, and I'm talking now from firsthand experience, uh, if an artist approaches me, like I, I love to listen to as much new music as I possibly can. I would love to hear your stuff. If it's 1 p.m. in the afternoon and I've just gotten uh, finished moderating a panel, I may have another one coming up that day. Uh, I may be wanting to sit in on some panels. Chances are I'm on my feet, and even if I'm staying at the host hotel, I'm upstairs carrying around a jewel case with a CD in it or an envelope with uh, a couple printouts, it just isn't ideal in that environment. So in that case, having a business card with a download code on the, on the back, uh, killer. Or it could even just be, yeah, something small that you can hand someone with your contact information, with a means to get to your music when is convenient for them, that's going to hit it out of the park. So there, I think there definitely still is... Um, somewhere where you know a paper press kit uh, with a hard copy of your music is going to make a lot of sense at these types of events unless you say prearranged with a mentor uh, in that one-on-one -on -one session to say hey by the way wait mind if i bring a copy of my album and they say absolutely then great but as far as on the spot networking and those events uh, yeah in most cases people aren't looking for extra weight to carry around or things that aren't going to fit into their pocket so um yeah, I hope that answers the question. If not, feel free to send me a follow-up. Um, here, I've got another one. Give me one second. And yeah, I'll probably take one or two more here, five minutes, and we'll keep moving. And remember, we'll have a longer question period at the end. Um, and if you've got something to add about the way I've responded to a question, if you think you can help out one of the fellow attendees, uh, please don't be shy. Again, it's all about discourse, dialogue, collaboration. That's how we all win. Um, let me see here. Don't have to stay on Google. Oh, make sure they remember you. How can I stand out? So I just had one. How can I stand out in a one-on-one -on -one meeting if 
uh, you know, there are dozens of other people that these people are, are going to be meeting at this one session. Um, and that's a great question. And one that you should constantly be asking yourself as an artist for anything. If it's a media interview, uh, you know, for your website, for your bio, that's the thing these days. I mean, it's great that so many people have access to uh, platforms where they can freely disseminate and promote their own music. But at the same time, um, there's more music out there than ever before. And it can be tough to sift through the noise in a lot of cases. So what makes you stand out uh, when you sit down to the, at a mentorship session? In a lot of cases, it doesn't even necessarily have to be about you. Uh, you can kind of play to the person you're meeting. And if it's someone who's maybe written an article that you really enjoyed or that books or represents an artist that you're a big fan of, you can start on that foot and establish a rapport that kind of, and it's the music industry, we all have egos to a degree. Uh, you can feed someone's ego a little bit and that's gonna go a long way in um, making them remember you, making them stand out. But then as far as uh, your own stuff, your own career, I mean, anything that's cool about your story, about your background, about how you got into music, about uh, a recent contest that you've won or achievement. Um, yeah, these are all things that help you differentiate yourself but um, yeah, in a lot of cases I'd say you almost have more opportunity to uh, stand out and be memorable by talking about something other than why <laughs> you should stand out or be memorable because of your music career if that makes sense uh, a lot of this is just about you know being friendly being a good person being conversational and uh, you know once you've kind of established that rapport and broken down barriers it really makes it a lot more conducive than to getting work done. Um, so yeah, let's keep rolling here. Any other questions before we move on? I'll take that as a no for now. Um, yeah, drop as many of those here as you can, even if it reaches outside of uh, what we're covering here. You know, if I think I can help, I will offer input. And if I can, I will try and direct you to where you can go to get your question answered. Again, check out those handouts though. There's probably lots there for you. So networking events, um, yeah, this is a pretty wide net, and for those that have been to, say, the Provincial Music Industry Association event, um, you know, you might be familiar with, like, the sponsored mixers, where after a day full of panels from 5 till 6, it's a happy hour in the hotel lobby, a mixer sponsored by SoCan or uh, Creative Saskatchewan or whatever it might be. Um, you know, that's one example, and the fact that it is called a mixer. That's one that's very conducive and intended for networking and business card exchange and uh, things like that. You know, in other cases, it might be an invite only quote unquote mixer networking session, but maybe later at night with dark lights and an open bar kind of thing. So, um, yeah, jumping to working the room, that's where I'm going with consider the environment is in a lot of these cases, these events are happening because they want you to be uh, exchanging business cards. In some of these cases, though, it's a bit more of a social event than a networking event, and maybe people are there to cut loose, have a drink, and catch up with friends. So just be aware of your environment, and you know, there's never a bad time to uh, politely and quickly introduce yourself to someone if you spot someone on the other end of the room that you've been looking to make contact with. You know, that's not going to hurt. But as far as taking someone away from who they're speaking with, if it's a mixer, if it's something where everyone in the room uh, is playing by the same rules and, and that's what they're there to do, then great. But uh, just be mindful. Um, yeah, making contacts again. Uh, I mean, basic common courtesy here, but to go back to the question about uh, paper EPKs, that's a great opportunity making contacts to have um, a business card or even if it's not, you know, your standard typical business card. I've had some great ones that are uh, stickers the band logo that have a download code on the back. Um, I had a band, saw a band at CMW a few years ago that was giving out just kind of cheap bottle openers that had their uh, band, you know, I think it was like Badass Rockin' or something like that, just described how they sound, and then their website right there. And that's a great one, you know, give someone something useful. Again, not heavy, not clunky, um, but you know, that they might hang on to and when they're uh, kind of decompressing after a busy event back at home, back in the office, uh, yeah, you're a prime candidate to get some of their attention. Um, 
yeah, so that's what it was with handouts there. I guess we would have got to that eventually, but still a great question. Keep those coming. Um, yeah, and as far as I guess we can talk about how to find these type of events, in a lot of cases, if you've signed up as a delegate, the presenters of these events are, are going to be trying to send them out. But in some cases, there is a bit of an invite-only um, motif here. So be sly, be resourceful. Uh, and actually going back, it kind of all comes full circle. But if you're in a panel um, and once it's over, you know, getting out and meeting a dozen of the other people in the room and exchanging information, you know, what are you doing later tonight? That's how you're going to hear about some of these really cool opportunities. Uh, exclusive events, small room events. Uh, yeah, be great for you. Uh-oh. Uh, someone just said I went mute. Um, quick crowdsource, can everybody, or I guess not everybody, but can other people hear me? If you don't mind just dropping a, a quick note in the questions here. Um, and if that's the case, then beg your pardon. Okay, thanks, Greg. Uh, then to HTML5 user, I just went mute. If you could hear me before and you can't now, I would have to assume it's either a connection problem or a hardware problem. And I'm sorry, I don't want to stall the session here too much, so we'll keep rolling. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, all the responses. Keep the questions coming too. Uh, and then follow up again at an event like this. Um, don't waste time. You probably don't need to go back to your hotel room right after the event while the uh, grander conference is still going on to follow up because everyone's still sort of in uh, stay up late, drink, watch showcases and get up at, well, whenever the conference is started the next day, but maybe later to nurse a hangover. Uh, all this to say, yeah, once you're decompressing post-event and people's attention is back to the daily grind, it's a better time to follow up. But again, uh, sharing a, a quick... Uh, memory of what you chatted about or building off of that conversation you had with this individual or asking questions that you know that they can answer that you again can't find the answer to other places is a great means of follow-up and again you're just building that bridge or strengthening that bridge so that when the time comes that one of these people is in a position to help you and you know that you as an act are in the position where they might want to and can get value out of it then the stage is already set and all of the heavy lifting the ice breaking is over and, and honestly in most of these cases that's what you're trying to do uh, the number of people that are going to get a cover story or a record deal or a management contract after a 10-15 minute meeting in an event like this is so minimal. Uh, but yet the number of friends that you can make by, you know, finding some common ground and just keeping a relationship alive, you know, you might see them at that same event the following year and have a ton to follow up on. And um, yeah, you're going to be in really great shape. Uh, let's keep rolling. So post-event, I mean, we've talked about a few of these things, but taking action. So again, hopefully uh, during the educational components, during your mentorship one-on-one -on -one sessions, you've been taking notes, uh, you've gone through, digested those notes, and then immediately built a plan. Um, you know, this is huge, especially with things like social media. I mean, there's so many social media targeted panels. Uh, I, I bring that up just because that's something that you can literally put into practice and it might be rude to do so, but like while you're listening. So post-event, there's really no excuse not to uh, sit down, cipher or yeah, sift through all of your notes. Um, think of all the people that you met maybe where you couldn't exchange a business card. See if there's an easy way to contact that person. Even if you saw a band that you really liked or someone you didn't even get to connect with. Uh, shoot a tweet their way. Engage with them. Um, but well, I guess that goes with following up on contacts, but taking action, just have a plan. And that's how it leads right into this next step. That's how you're going to maximize your ROI, your return on investment. And that's something you should be doing too is, you know, taking action, um, opening as many doors, building as many bridges as you can post event. And then immediately after that, assessing the value. So this is how much I spent to get there. This is how much of my time I spent uh, there. What did I get out of this? Was it worth it? Um, you know, am I better positioned to push myself to the next plateau of my career? Did I make enough valuable contacts 
uh, or plant enough seeds that you know I'm going to come back next year? Is this the type of event that I need to attend every year? Is it the type of event I'm never going to attend again? Is it the type of event that there might be value in you know sitting one out every second year? Um, think about all this, note it, and basically just add it to your database of information. It's going to come in very handy down the road. Another cool thing here about assessing value, of course, uh, is not just isolating that single event, but then kind of leveraging or comparing that with other events. So what's key here is, you know, if you're based in, say, the prairies and you're a provincial music uh, industry association, say you have to drive to Winnipeg and it's an hour trip and you've got one hotel night and you're in front of X amount of delegates, like, what value did you get out of that event versus flying to South by Southwest and having to pay more for accommodations and travel and that opportunity and weigh the two? You know, it, it might be the case where, sure, South by Southwest has more on offer. Maybe uh, it generated a bit more for you. But if it costs three or four times as much to attend that event and you've yielded similar, maybe not as many, but similar benefits from something more local, Again, you're um, informing how you can make these decisions down the road. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. Following up with contacts uh, we've covered here, the bottom line though is do it. Even if it's someone you know really well, uh, and I'm kind of guilty of this myself, is at a lot of these events you see the same familiar faces, people you might see once or twice every year and kind of take for granted that it was, you know, another catch up. And obviously you both know who you are and you're just a phone call away, but it can never hurt uh, to reestablish that contact after the event, maybe to follow up on a seed that was planted. Uh, it's critical and I really can't stress it enough or I, maybe I can anyway. Uh, and last preparing for the next one kind of goes back to uh, assessing value. But once you've taken in one of these events, uh, you have are in much better position to, I guess, chart your territory uh, for next one. So, yeah, I sat in on some panels. I found this track to be very entertaining. I found this track to be covering things I already know. So uh, maybe in the future, I'm going to spend more time learning about royalties, about uh, grant applications about revenue streams versus say uh, booking a tour because I'm pretty good at booking my own shows. So, um, yeah, I'm happy where we're at here. I appreciate, uh, by the way, I haven't said it yet, but I appreciate everyone taking the time, uh, and all of the support. This is great. Oh, and some great, I was just going to say, we'll take some more questions here. Uh, and the first one that I saw isn't a question, actually. It's someone helping me out with a great point that we'll share here. Gum and breath freshener. Good to have at conferences. You'll be talking to a lot of people, want to make a good impression. Absolutely. Didn't even really think to go to that base level, but yeah, presentation, hygiene, appearance, um, I get first impressions mean a ton. And at these events, in a lot of cases, you are selling, representing yourself, you're your own brand ambassador. So uh, yeah, that's something to keep in mind even when you're just walking around not even uh, meeting anybody is be relaying the image that is in line with your band that is going to represent you properly that if you know you're meeting someone for the first time uh, that it all kind of fits and connects uh, thank you for that suggestion kim uh keep them coming here any others well one thing i didn't mention if you are registered i don't know how many actually do this um, but Canadian Music Week, for example, if you've registered, if you're a delegate or you've uh, paid to attend the conference, uh, which I guess then makes you a delegate, everybody's contact information that is taking part in the conference is actually available in the back end only to the other participants. So that right there is a huge, huge, huge tool. Uh, very, very valuable that, again, I know for a fact goes painfully underutilized and underappreciated. Um, but it sets the stage for even if the event you're going to doesn't do that, if it's, say, a provincial music industry association event, you know, in a lot of cases, these are offices of anywhere from one to half a dozen people that are very uh, tied into the local music community. There's no harm in, in reaching out to someone. Hey, I know Music Nova Scotia Week is about a month away. Uh, any ideas as to the delegate le list yet? Can you share it? And knowing who's going to be at the event 
it's a great idea to reach out beforehand, especially if you're showcasing, you know, to try to get people in the room. Um, but not necessarily so. Uh, again, going back to the January music meeting in uh, Manitoba in early 2016, uh, that was such a killer event. I had, I think it was three or four artists reach out to me in about the week before uh, to say, hey, Andrew, this is who we are. This is my band. We're playing. But in some cases, it wasn't even someone trying to get me to a show. It was just, hey, I know you're coming. Would love to maybe grab a copy, sit down for five minutes. Uh, shout out to French Press, the Middle Coast, from being a galore. Um, all of which has been making some pretty huge career moves since that time. Coincidence? Well, probably, but not necessarily. Uh, anyway, uh, reaching out beforehand, I mean, it's great just to show initiative. And being a presenter at a lot of these events, you know, I'm always trying to share best practices for making these types of connections and how to actually get someone in your corner. So anytime that someone takes that advice uh, and lives it. If you know, if I'm going to CMW and you email me a week before and say, "Hey, I know you're coming. I'm a big fan of the magazine." Again, ego. Uh, and I've got two showcases here and here. Think you can make it? I promise you, I'm going to. Uh, and in most cases, will I'm going to show up because you've got to apply that kind of initiative. Uh, you know, that's what we're all here trying to do: is strengthen the industry, get that high tide floating all of our boats. So. Um, yeah, reach out ahead of time, establish connection, even if you're not necessarily guaranteed to be meeting this person on site. Um, it shows initiative, it shows ambition, it shows respect in a lot of cases. Uh, just to say, hey, I'm familiar with you, I'm a fan, this is what I do, we should connect. I think we'd have a great chat. I think we can be of benefit to each other. Um, yeah. Any other questions here? Uh, and again, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'll say one more time, canadianmusician.com slash features. Catapult your career by Samantha Everts. Uh, a lot of these points are in there, but she's got some really great tidbits from some industry heavyweights. Uh, she's got some, well, it just kind of builds on it a bit. There's a great section in there where, you know, if you're in a market that it's tough to get to some of these uh, music industry events, you can be hosting your own. And they don't have to be major. She's got some tips as to how you can you know, get like-minded people together, maybe secure a bit of funding. Uh, it really is a phenomenal feature story. So check that one out. Uh, and also remember next month, April, late April, Luther Mallory. Check out LutherMalloryProductions.com. Uh, yeah, we're going to help you own the stage, overcome your fears, be in the right mental state to uh, leave a lasting impression, make a huge impact. And... Finally, musicbooksplus.com slash festivals. If you head over there, uh, we've got a few uh, book titles here that I guess kind of expand a bit or at least are semi-related to the topic that we've got here. At the link to, uh, even if you're not interested in shopping, there's a list of some points that will help you take advantage of your next webinar experience, um, whether it's with us or anybody else. But we hope that it's with us uh, because if you go to nwcwebinars.com, we're doing one of these every month, and uh, well, they're for you. And we want to hear from you. We want your feedback. We want your attention, and we want to see you succeed. Um, as it says here, oh, and we've got another question, which I'll jump to in just a second. Um, you'll receive an email shortly, yeah, where you'll be able to access a recording of the presentation. That'll be going out 24 hours after the session, so be patient, and from there, uh, feel free to share it, feel free to repeat listens. Um, if you weren't taking notes fast enough here, wink, wink, uh, and yeah, there's plenty more of these to come. So, uh, the question came, do you have any advice for someone who wants to edit or write for music publications? Oh, way to know your audience. I absolutely do. Uh, again, Going back to what I was saying earlier, uh, you're going to have a lot more luck, and I'm speaking from my own experience and that of some uh, other people I can kind of speak for. Uh, you're going to have a lot more luck connecting and doing sort of the soft sell, not, hi, I'm a writer, and immediately start pitching, but rather establish a rapport. Hey, I'm familiar with the magazine. I really enjoyed uh, the piece you did here, or I thought that this piece was good, but maybe you didn't challenge your interviewee enough on this, uh, or you know, really like the Blue Rodeo story. Did you know blank? Establish a rapport. Talk about 
your strength, you know, then get to talking about yourself and um, just establish a relationship that you can follow up on. Again, the instant gratification is, is very uh, seldom, few and far between in this industry. So, yeah, it's more about kind of setting the stage and, and the slow burn, uh, creating a good, solid relationship. And then, you know, once your name is known and top of mind, it's a lot easier to say, by the way, um, because not only are you kind of slow working the editor or the person in control there, but you're also getting a better feel for how they make their editorial decisions. So let's let's just talk about Canadian musician here. You know, if you come to me and say, hey, I really like the piece you did on this last time. I think there's a lot more to be said about this point. I'd be interested in writing a follow up story if you are. That is so much better or more valuable than to say, you know, well, first off, to put it in the other person's court, like, hey, I'm a writer. Do you have any stories? Like, no, bad idea. Bring something to the table. Uh, but even there, something like that where you know who you're pitching to, where you know you've got an idea that's semi-exclusive or unique to you, I should say, uh, that's going to be a lot more valuable than, hey, I I want to pitch a story about Mother Mother or Blue Rodeo. Again, these are things that any music writer worth their salt could do a story on. So we're probably going to stick with our usual stable of freelancers there. Um, so yeah, that's my advice is to yeah make as many connections, make it known that you are a writer and interested in contributing, but don't worry about that instant gratification. Instead, try to build that rapport. Try and suck out some information that's going to help you make a really effective pitch. Know the publication well. I can't say this enough. I honestly get dozens of emails every week uh, asking to review music and we don't do album reviews in Canadian Musician. If you're coming to me and I know that you're a writer and not a musician looking for attention, but if you don't know the outlet that you're courting or trying to write for, it's just another kind of name in the pile. Whereas if you come prepared, show that you know our audience, our arena, and that you know you can bring value to it, that goes a lot further. Um, yeah, sorry, I kind of got a bit blabby there. Uh, if you want to send a follow-up, please do. And uh, my email, aking, A-K-I-N-G, at nord.com. Feel free to hit me uh, at any point after, too, with something longer. If you get rejected to perform at one of these conferences for a showcase, what other ways can an artist push to get recognized? Great one. I might get in trouble for this, uh, especially after, I don't know if you guys know, like, all the controversy around South by Southwest this year, uh, especially with like the United States immigration policy changes, controversies, but basically South by Southwest took a pretty hard stance to say, if you're coming to this event to try and play, but you're not an officially sanctioned South by Southwest act, you know, if you're not American, we're going to call the authorities and report you is essentially what they were saying. And uh, I say that just to say, you know, for a lot of these events, having an official showcase is, is critical to them and, you know, makes a lot of sense that they stand. So I don't want to be promoting this uh, grill idea, but a lot of the events do have and kind of welcome the gray area, no cases. So if you get rejected to perform, at say a, a big music conference in Halifax, well, maybe there is a venue that's nearby where the action is happening, but not an official venue. Maybe you can put on a show there with some like-minded bands. These, this is a popular thing, the quote unquote, no case. Um, and that's just if you want to play and then you can be on site, you can be handing out your flyers uh, and promoting your show there. I mean, that is an option. A better one, though, especially if it is uh, an event where, you know, they've really kind of tightened the belt on that is uh, a lot of the better opportunities for networking is during the day at the conference anyway. I mean, it's great to have a showcase. It's great to target and invite professionals out that you want to have in the room. It's great to be able to show them what you do, what you do best and leave them with a good impression. But in a lot of cases, you know, some of these showcases are sparsely attended. There's, you know, the big ticket concerts and then there are the smaller venues where a lot of artists get lumped and maybe playing to a dozen people so in all honesty your best bet for making contacts and doing business is at the event during the day anyway so if you get rejected to perform don't fret there's probably still a lot of value in just going to attend and uh, so what other ways can you push to get recognized 
there's nothing to say that you can't be postering, even being creative about it. Uh, you know, a gig poster that says we're not actually playing a gig, but check us out. This is who we sound like. This is what we do. This is why we're awesome. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of, of these people, of this opportunity uh, that go beyond, you know, the opportunity to play for them, especially with technology getting even crazier. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of, like, ways that you could probably even show a video or put on a performance or something that even just busking, you know. So I've seen people do that. I've seen them do it very effectively. Um, yeah, just think outside the box a little bit and play within the rules, I should say. I hope that helps. What time are we at here? Yeah. Oh, another great one from Kim uh, that kind of ties together a lot of what's been said. But uh, yeah, if you're not performing, that's another one is you can get a list of the delegates or identify who's going to be there and hit them up ahead of time or hit them up afterwards. Hey, I see you're going to be or I saw that you were blank. We weren't performing, but I'm a fan. I was there. Maybe feed the ego a bit. I saw you speak and really liked what you had to say about this. By the way, here's a video of my band. Uh, here's one or two important slash different things about us. And uh, that goes a long way. Thanks again, Kim. About just shy of the hour here. Um, there's no further questions. We can wrap it up here. NWCWebinars.com. Uh, huge thanks for coming. And finally, when we shut down the session here, uh, you're going to be asked to complete a very, very, very short survey. Your participation and your honesty are much appreciated, again, because we're bringing these to you free of charge. Um, and we just want to be doing a better job of it and making sure that we're getting you the information you want on the topics you want. Um, so yeah, please tell us how we did, how we can do better, things that you would like to see from us. Although uh, before you tell us what you want to see from us, check out that nwcwebinars.com list. There's over a dozen sessions there right now for your viewing pleasure. Um, and they cover a wide breadth of topics, and they're only going to be getting wider as we go forward. Uh, CanadianMusician.com on Facebook.com slash CDNMusician, Twitter at CDNMusician. You, that's a lot, 40 minutes of straight talking. I appreciate your patience, appreciate you uh, joining us here, appreciate the support, and all the best uh, during the upcoming music conference and event season. My name is Andrew King, and uh, we're signing off here. Hope to have you back.